All right, I'm going to take a look at personal pronouns in this presentation, um, specifically personal pronouns in the accusative case. I'm going to begin the presentation with a brief review of definite articles, specifically the masculine definite article dare. Uh, from there, we will move over to a discussion of personal pronouns in the data, uh, excuse me, in the accusative case. And then, as usual, we will end the presentation with some hands-on examples of how to use personal pronouns when uh, forming a German sentence. So, you'll recall that the definite article der changes as it moves from a nominative to an accusative environment. Der goes to den. So, we have on the screen uh, the sentence, das ist der Tisch. Now, uh, we are describing a characteristic of the table. We're pointing to it. We're demonstrating it. We're, um, the table isn't doing anything. It's just being. Therefore, uh, table, der Tisch, will be in the nominative case. Now, if I introduce another actor into the sentence, in this case, er, he, um, this actor is doing something. He has something. Um, er hat den Tisch. He has the table. Um, this action of having has to have an object to receive the action, and that would be the table. Now, since it receives the action of being had by the subject of the sentence, er, it's going to be in the accusative case. So, to summarize, definite articles, um, Specifically, the masculine definite article changes as it moves from a nominative to an accusative environment. Now, we're going to see the same type of change in some personal pronouns. Now, the personal pronouns in the nominative case are what you see on your screen. Ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie. And then we also have the uh, personal pronouns, nominative, which are in the formal, which you see on your screen. The second person, um, formal, singular, and plural, which would be Z. Now, these forms, some of them change in, as they move from a nominative to an accusative environment, just as we've seen that dare changes the dain as it moves from nominative to accusative. Now, you'll also recall that the other definite articles, D and DAS, don't change as they move from, or at least the outward form doesn't change as the definite article moves from a nominative to an accusative environment. And so we're going to see the exact same thing here with these personal pronouns. You see on the screen that the personal pronouns in the red boxes change as they move from a uh, from a nominative to an accusative environment. So, ich becomes mich. Du becomes dich. Er, he, in the third person singular, becomes ihn. Uh, Z and S, however, she and it remain the same. In the plural column, wir becomes uns, ihr becomes euch. And the third person plural, Z or they, remains the same. Now, if we look at the, uh, the formal forms of the personal pronoun, they both remain the same, singular and plural, Z in nominative and Z in accusative. Now, these charts are useful to memorize. In fact, this is about the only way you're going to get this into your mind is to memorize them. Um, However, uh, at the same time, as you memorize them, bear in mind that you're also trying to develop a feel for it. So, a feel that certain things change. Uh, masculine definite articles change. Also, the uh, personal pronoun, the third person singular personal pronoun, er, masculine, changes as well, changes the een. Um, there are also certain patterns that you'll recognize, like the first person and second person singular, ich and du. Um, ich simply add an M on, mich. Du um, 
changes to D, retains the initial D. So these are small sort of mnemonic devices to help you memorize these charts and to internalize them. Now let's look at some examples of how to use personal pronouns. Uh, we have datish is klein, the table is small. Now you'll recall that nouns uh, demonstrate gender, masculine, feminine, or neuter. And so datish uh, is a masculine noun. So we could replace datish with a personal pronoun, which in the case would be, since we we're talking about a quality of the table, is going to be a nominative personal pronoun, er. Er is klein. Now, this, these last two slides were only in the nominative. We also can use personal pronouns in an accusative environment. So, for example, ich sehe den Tisch. I see the table. Now, I, ich, and the subject of the sentence, I'm doing something, I'm looking. Uh, something has to receive the action of me looking at it, and that would be the table. Now, since it receives the action, it's going to move from a nominative to an accusative environment. Therefore, I'm going to use den Tisch. Now, I could also substitute this masculine singular accusative noun with the appropriate uh, personal pronoun. Ich sehe den Tisch changes to ich sehe ihn. Now, um, it's useful to use personal pronouns uh, because it uh, saves a lot of effort. We don't have to repeat den Tisch, den Tisch, den Tisch all the time. We could simply substitute den Tisch with ihn. Um, this is especially useful or are uh, frequently done when uh, a context has already been established. So if I know I'm talking about the table already, I don't need to constantly remind my conversational partner that I'm still talking about the table by referring to it. I can simply use the personal pronoun in if it's in the accusative case. So um, now we could substitute nouns with pronouns but um, we also use it with people as well. So, for instance, on this slide here, uh, Sie sehen mich. They see me. Now, I'm using mich here instead of ich because uh, the subject of the sentence, Sie, the third person plural nominative, they, um, they are doing something. What are they doing? They are seeing. So, um, something has to receive the action of being seen, and that would be me. Uh, they are seeing me, therefore, ich, the I, has to change to a mich or a me in the accusative. Now, the same type of pattern also exists with uh, other pronouns besides me. For instance, sie sehen dich. They see you. So remember that do in the nominative changes to dich in the accusative. Um, same dynamics in the sentence. We have the subject, third person, plural, nominative. Um, what are they doing? They are seeing. Well, whom do they see? They see you. Uh, you receive the action of being seen, therefore you're going to be accusative. Do, therefore, has to change to dich. So to summarize. Uh, some pronouns, some personal pronouns change as they move from a nominative to an accusative environment. Um, generally, th these patterns are fairly predictable. It's the uh, third person singular masculine. Der goes to den, definite article. Er goes to ihn, personal pronoun. Um, others have sort of uh, tack on a, simply tack on a extra consonant at the beginning. Ich tacks on mich, an M at the beginning. Uh, others retain. Du retains D and adds ich on the end. Um, these are sort of simple mnemonic devices to help you understand the larger, uh, internalize the larger pattern. Others, like uh, S and Z, she and it, third person singular, simply stay the same. They're the same in nominative and in accusative. The main idea is that these forms of the language indicate uh, sort of a road map to what's going on in the sentence. Um, I know that 
as a sentence you see on the screen, it's Z, they. They are the subject of the sentence because they are in the nominative. I know that they're looking at me. I received the action of being seen because dich is an accusative. And so it's not, not me looking at them, but they're looking at me. So the form of the language underscores the action in the sentence. Um, personal pronouns.